People deluded, I'm back again. Come on, Ian. <laughs> Come on, Ian. Come on, Ian. People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. I appreciate you guys' support. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. Twitch gang, appreciative. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night, depending on wherever you guys are tuned in from. The grand don't stop. How can I? One thing that will stop this is if the charger isn't in, people. So one second, people. I can actually see my laptop charger isn't in. We're going to get into a serious situation. And actually, the Ethernet cable is not in as well, which is a shame. What the hell's going on? I'm still here, people. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Where is it? Where is the Ethernet? This is the Mac. This is the problem you get with my Mac. If you're doing content, never get a Mac. People. Never ever get a Mac. Or cop not the opportunity, man. It won't let you drive. But here we have it. <clears throat> Happy Sunday as well, folks. And them things there. Obviously, one love for you lot continuously supporting my content. And obviously, last night we watched Arsenal play. That's bugging out. So let me actually. One second. Yeah, the start that was all a bit mad. But as I said, man, appreciative of you lot tuned in. Thank you very much for all the support. Hope last week, or better yet, this week, and what's left of it was fantastic for you lot. Hope you've all been enjoying the weekend. Hope you and your loved ones are healthy. And I hope next week, in terms of your goals, hopes, dreams, ambitions, aspirations, overcoming any obstacles in your life, is plain sailing. Hit the like button, man. Stream pushed back as man like DG was enjoying his sleep. I was, but I mean, come on, man. As much as the work rate's there, and I love you lot tuned in on Twitch and YouTube. I'm a human being, loud me, man. You know, the hours are crazy. But yeah, I thought it's Sunday, chill out. You know, and then after this, I'm going to enjoy the weather and, and enjoy what I can of it. Because in the UK, Tuesday and Monday and Tuesday, but yeah, it's, it's due to be a madness, even hotter. So I'm going to be dying and baking as we talk about whatever there is to speak about tomorrow, in it. So yeah, as I said, one love to everyone who supports the content, especially yesterday, especially the live stream that we did. People, if you're on YouTube, hit the like button. As you know, we get to 200 likes, we start going through the transfer news. Primarily is centred around Zinchenko and his impending transfer to Arsenal. Like, if you obviously read between the lines, I've, well, everyone's in America, in it, you know, really. And obviously in different states, but City are in America. Zinchenko's flown out there. If things can be done, you can imagine he completes a medical in America and he exits the City base. The logistics team obviously help him to, you know, participate in Arsenal's preseason and what's left of it. You know, I think if we're led to believe next week, next week is a subjective term. It could be Monday morning. It could be Friday in Arsenal's terms. If he doesn't come come to the team by 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 Monday or just before Thursday, then obviously he's ineligible ineligible to play against uh, Orlando. If he does, then he'll actually get to play against Chelsea, which is our last game of you know the preseason tour or the preseason leg of our American tour. And then we come back, we play Sevilla. The club will probably have some behind closed doors friendlies or something along them lines. And in a couple of weeks, it's showtime, isn't it, people? It's Crystal Palace. You know, thirty eight game Premier League calendar. Returns. Not much more to say. With Zinchenko done, another midfielder, another winger would complete the window. I can't lie. Amen. But, oh, you know, it's easier said than done. We're doing to City what they did to us from 09, 10 to 11, 12 seasons. I'm not too sure if it's that because the critics might say Zinchenko can't play left back when there's no left back. You know, hey, this is a backup striker for no backup striker. And obviously, if we don't, if we don't go and win Premier League titles, then it's not quite the same. But I hear it. And all the, you know, they always talk about I know Premier League fans, agendas have got to run and things like that, but all this snooty stuff about, you know, Premier League rejects and all of this, I'm not being funny. Have you seen Arsenal? Fifth, fifth, well, eighth back-to-back -back and then fifth. 
And I think fifth just before the back-to-back -back eight finishes. You know, if we could get cast-offs from any team, it bloody well better be the team that's winning the Premier League, really and truly. You know, um, do I think Zinchenko solves all our problems? Do I think Jesus could, um, solves all our problems? No, I think they're good players. They obviously add to what we've got. They're players that you can rely on. When I think of Gabriel Jesus, he's obviously a good player and he doesn't get injured too tough, with the exception of the Arsenal tax. And I extend that to Zinchenko. Obviously, can play as a left-sided centre-mid can play at left back, you know, we'll get into it, but Tierney's apparently picked up a small knock. He's not alone in that regards, people, before you lot get onto him. I'm Tierney FC, but again, with even the most loyal Tierney fans, we all have to recognise that it's crazy right now, really. We can't just be relying on them. It's crazy. So, yeah, man. Well, again, every title I do on YouTube, it says I'm violating something. Sorry, folks. Admin issues. I think we're back again. All right, cool, calm, collective. 40 likes, people. We're better than that. You lot are better than that. CS morning right back at you, my guy. Hopefully, everyone got a good night's sleep after that midnight watch along. Charles, and you know what? It doesn't get any easier. Thursdays at half past midnight. And I think Chelsea's game's at 1 1 a.m. Sorry, UK time. So it's crazy. But we did it for the cause, man. Respect, Anthony. I see you in obviously I cut up the clips and premiere them a lot of the time. I see you making sure people trying to hit the like button and them things there. Don't think I don't see everything, Anthony. I appreciate that. Zinchenko's a smart signing. Exactly. It's not a sexy signing, but you make a couple of smart decisions. Nine times out of ten, you're ending up having a good squad. You know, I'm not we're not Liverpool, but at the time, Salah wasn't seen as a as a madness signing. Marnie wasn't seen as a madness. Robertson at whole, respectfully, definitely wasn't seen as that. Only at the time, Alisson and Van Dijk off the top of my head, as they've become this Premier League challenging side. Obviously, Lee, Luis Diaz and these things have have arrived. I'm not going to say it kind of extends to City and they did, you know, they spent a, a, a mad outlay on Ruben Diaz, but he was attainable. You know, so Leroy Sane was about 40 million. He was seen as a promising kid. You know, Kevin De Bruyne had just left Chelsea them sort of times there and there was Bundesliga tax of flying. When you make some smart decisions, you start having, ending up having a decent squad and then maybe, you know, I think even the most optimistic of Arsenal fans, you know, we're not getting... Sane and Gnabry signed a new deal, but Sane, Gnabry, all these guys, if you fix up the team and have a proper squad, then maybe in a f in the future transfer windows, provided all the other variables fall into place, we could start getting their marquee talents and things like that. But it's all about smart decisions. I know in the Premier League, the first thing that Premier League fans, it's all about money, 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 money. And I probably sound like a broken record, but I'm sure you hear, you lot hear me a lot of the time say it's down to coaching as well. Coaching isn't sexy, you know. Klopp, Getting a tune out of out of Henderson, making Robertson decent, you know, taking Trent from the academy. Obviously, what Trent's doing in the game is lit, but it's that's not sexy, you know. Having a bunch of a bunch of players and improving them year after year and molding them and getting a tune out of them, it's not sexy, you know. Eddie Howe gets all the praise for making Joe Linton a midfielder, obviously because it's a talking point. By the time it's not sexy, we need to do the right things and the competent things. Really, if spending money and gas signings were were were. Well, what gets you back? Then Arsenal would have done that. We signed a £72 million man. As you know, it's we're at where we're at with that one. Amazing talking points. Keep them coming, people. Make sure you're hitting the like button. In fact, I think with that, we have some interesting talking points. Let's make that a timestamp. Any glamorous signings? Leave it at that. Shout out to Canadians. Appreciate you, Lobo. Boy, I'm taking them rejects. Have you seen our team? Trust. And especially, this is probably the... Respectfully, the worst way Arsenal sort of been in my short 27 years on this earth, if I'm completely honest with you, you know, in terms of expectations, in terms of players, like, let's be honest, I'm not trying to be harsh, but we praise players for working hard. We praise players for turning it on for two games. We praise players for pride in the shirt. Even me, I love Tommy Asu. I like what Ramsdale brings to the table, but the bar's on the floor, you know, because of their predecessors before them, really. And that's, and, I, and, and on one hand, I can't really blame fans because when you've been starved of certain things, you're obviously going to get bandoolied. Appreciate you, Chris. Man, are talking about rejects from the... Oh, bro, it's just... It, this agendas, man. You know, we'll run that. You know, certain Arsenal fans were, you know, acting like es experts on Lissandro Martinez. Oh, left-hand side, he can compete with Gabriel doing this and that. The minute he signs for United, they've signed a midget centre-back. We wanted Zinchenko anyways. The game's the game. But away from banter and stuff, we have to be honest with ourselves, man. You know, Zinchenko, like Jesus, they can help us. I don't like what we do at Arsenal in that we look at one guy to be the talisman and 
reshape everything. It needs to be a collective effort. You know, things would look if you go through all the best teams in the Premier League that have ever been or in today's day and age, things would look very different if they were relying on one player to be the difference between winning nine times out of ten. That's what Arsenal do. Respectfully, yeah, there's times where even the Rebels, respectfully, on then they hold in Cedric Tavares. They done all right at points last season. But nine times out of ten, you know, if it's not Bakayo Saka, we're not doing nothing. And it's testament to him. Hopefully, rumours are true and we're moving closer to giving him a new deal. It's damning on the club. You know, as much as I love Haylen Talents and you can't not love Bakayo Saka, bro, look how massive Arsenal Football Club is. Look at what we've done. Look at what we could do. Look at, bro, look at where it is from a business point of view. A guy that's been a professional footballer for two minutes is the reason we win or lose. And take nothing away from Saka. That actually is a message to the, the, the board, the, the coaching staff, the technical staff, all departments, really. And, you know, even down to Saka's more experienced teammates that have been technically employed by Arsenal football team. I know there's not many now because there's been a clear out before him. And it's not just Saka. Nine times out of ten, it's the youth, man. Smith Rowe, him last season... Martinelli, you know, he's easy. It's easy for him to, you know, fans to get galvanized but for, but behind him because obviously he doesn't seem overawed and things like that. Eddie and Ketty are to a lesser degree based on the last couple games he got to start. It's not really the experience done, and you want to see that really. Even Odegaard, respectfully, well, you know, what's he done in the game? He's a Norway Norwegian captain. He's obviously a very good player. He plays for Arsenal, he played for Real Madrid. Anyone that doesn't understand where I'm going, you get where I'm at. Why is it to get there's no how has he done this already? Again, I know we're doing this youngster thing, but we need we need a bit more urgency, really and truly, man. But yeah, man, very good thought-provoking things. But I'm taking them rejects, man. And again, I don't I know Hayes this has got mentality, I know Zinchenko's got mentality, I know where you look at Ramsdale, Lokonga, even though he can't buy a game. Many of the renew recruits you could point towards leadership and developing new leaders and things like that. Um, so I, I, I like all of that, but it has to be a collective effort, man. It can't just be one guy just going to turn it on and transform this football team to back to where it belongs. It's not going to be like that. People can lie to themselves, but it's what it is. Do you think that the Telemans deal is done? Do you see him holding a shirt? Do you see him taking pictures behind me in the, in the change room? No, you know. Part of me thinks we get Zinchenko, we might sit there and say, you know what, Telemans done no more, bro, in a bit. Or maybe, you know, what I hope is that you know, and this is dream world. Zinchenko gets confirmed. We put some more effort to get in this, you know, Lucas Paqueta, one of these sort of Samba Dons, you know, and then Telemans, we're going to get you. You're not going to be there for the Palace game. Hopefully you are, but we're going to sw swoop you. But I can't see us bringing in three men that are able to play midfield. Four, if you say Fabio Vieira. In fact, the interview yesterday we read, the man himself says, I can play as an eight. I'll do that, but I'm a 10. You know, you've got too many midfielders, really to a degree. And, and for me, looking at Arteta's mindset and Xhaka is going to play significantly, he's not going to bring three man in and really three for that. Probably, you know, if you was to ask Telemans, where would you fit in right now at Arsenal? Still on the left-hand side of the midfield the duo with Partey, pivot better yet. Zinchenko, if he plays, they obviously man could play everywhere, but you get the point. You know, Fabio Vieira will play on the left-hand side. I can't see him doing that. Xhaka will always... You know, one thing I don't question about Xhaka's mentality, I don't think he'll run from a challenge. And I would like to see all these guys recruited because Xhaka is contracted until 2024 and 29 years of age. His future is, and I think he has an option of a new, of a one-year extension. But on the best of days, Xhaka's future is very volatile when whether people like him or not, as is, you know, on the best of days, so should he. And when I look at how it went for Ozil, we only really replaced creativity when we evidently saw it's over here. Aubameyang, yes, we, we tried to bring in a striker when he was before this madness happened with him, but only really did we see Vlahovic links and this and that and the third when him and Arteta have found something. So now if I look at Xhaka, whether you like him or not, he is one of the first names on the team sheet. He is centre to our midfield, so that means he's the bridge between defence and offence. And as you know, Arsenal's midfield hasn't been addressed. Don't wait until he's 20, until he wants to leave. This time last summer, you was led to believe he's going to keep it moving. So I do want to see us be a bit more proactive to go back to the Liverpool thing. Whether Darwin Nunes and Diaz are able to, to, to step up in Mane's absence is another thing. But they're evidently trying to replace things before they before it's become a thing, if that makes sense. Obviously, you could argue that with the young Canate in defence as well. Not better than Saliba, though. We're ready for the agendas. I know, I know. It's all entertainment. Don't take me seriously. Well, shout out to you lot, man. I am more confident seeing Gabriel Jesus in the box than Eddie. I am, but I think yesterday was a glimpse as to, obviously, you give Jesus something to work with, little scraps, and 
He, he grabbed the goal, little instinctive finish. You know, he's shown a bit of them in preseason. He should have got two assists for Saka, but he obviously, you know, term provider for Saka. But I think when you was watching the game and you saw Everton playing three at the back, being quite rigid and solid defensively to a degree for as fast as we started and the game was basically played in their half. Jesus, obviously, for, a, for, for not the biggest of man, he can hold the ball in that, but that's not a strength of his. You saw him, I won't say struggling, but you saw him kind of outnumbered and that nine times out of ten happens on the best of days. You saw that to a degree. You saw, obviously, was still just, it's just Saka and Inshallah down that right-hand side. You can see how maybe it's because we haven't got certain players in the midfield. Maybe it's coaching. Maybe it's just we need to develop, but it's very easy to kind of outdo Arsenal because on the best of days, you know, if we were to judge that Everton game away from the obvious, there's many comparisons with uh, with to how we play in pre how we play in the Premier League season. First 20 minutes should have went three, two, three, four up, you know, for all the possession that is in their half. As I said, the pressing was coordinated when we started the stronger lineup. There were some positives there. But yeah, well, everybody's quite comfortable on the ball. Couple brain farts and Everton were going forward in that. But everyone's good on the ball. There's neat little one-twos, little cute flicks. We go down the left, we turn back, we go down the right, we turn back. In terms of them penetrative passes and really hurting the keeper to score goals, we haven't we can't really do that at this moment in time, which is goes back to the previous point of it has to be a coaching thing because you saw. For Hayes, this is goal pick for T-Rex. You know, I can't lie, I'm doing Leno dirty, but I've seen Leno do that for as good as he's been for us. Beer times for Arsenal. Set piece FC struck again. Uh, Pickford, sorry, misjudged the, the flight of the co of the corner. You know, it fell all the way to Hayes, Cedric's corner. Shout out to him, fullback union and that. And, he's, and it was instinctive. And you saw a couple of times Everton were committed to playing out of the back and we were forcing them into errors. For all of that, imagine if we had some chances and we scored some goals. And again, it goes back to coaching. I have to discount it a bit because we haven't really got them cold hearted hitters. But there is there is elements of, of, of that really and truly. There's, you know, every we, we should have when we returned for pre-season on the board, obviously long term what we want to do in the season. But in the immediate few months, what do we need to work on the most? Evidently, we need to keep improving defensively, but it sounds mad. Again, in my short 27 years, Arsenal don't look like a team that's going to score goals. We should be one of the, if not the best team that looks like scoring goals. And obviously, even when we moved to the Emirates and we was rubbed, only Barcelona at a point could talk to us when it, took, when it came to playing football. This beautiful game and things like that. We can't say that now. All the metrics, goals, assists chances created, touches in the opposition box. You look at where our goals come from, really, you know. Maybe not so much last season, but Pepe's been a bit part player under Arteta. Nine times out of ten, he's nearer the top bracket for who's got goals and assists in all comps. We need to score goals. So do we have that on mind, what we're going to work on? And then obviously, who do we play first? You know, you work on something in Nuremberg, you get it a bit better against Everton and then Chelsea and Orlando and Sevilla and all, and, and all of that because... You know, it's a myth. I know fans think, I know it's all optimism, last season's done and that, but fans think these players are going to go away for a few weeks and then they're going to come back. Just everything that we need to, Arsenal need to be to be a top four team and beyond and they're going to be much better. It doesn't work like that. It takes forever to promote good and bad habits. Old habits die hard. You know, we just need to improve a bit by bit by bit and hopefully we get there, you know. So, yeah, and I think mentality is something. Like I said, we need to smell blood because I do think at times fans as well, when the Emirates is shining and we play like we do in the first half of Everton, um, against Everton yesterday, hit the like button, 200 likes and we get into everything, people. It's not that we take the handbrake off, but it's like, okay, things are going good now, you know, they're not really harming us. And as you know, goals change games. And how many times have we seen a first half like against Everton? Like I said, it wasn't a bad first half where we'll be doing all these things and then they'll go down the back of the net and score. You know, yes, we scored two goals in two and we did get a clean sheet pre-season or not as an Arsenal fan. You want to grab onto them, really, because out of the top six, you know, I think we finished fifth for clean sheets. Only Man United were worse than us. And Man United couldn't keep couldn't keep their door shut yesterday, last season, much like us. And 10 hog tax, they're going to improve. But I am more confident with Hazus in the box than any. But I do like what Eddie brings to the table. I just want to see plan B. They've got similar profiles. There'll be realities just like football where we're chasing the game. Hazus and Eddie might be on. Saka might be on. Martinelli might be on and we we might need the next man to score, you know. Some, it's not always... I know if you was to go through Liverpool's highlights, clearly Salah, Firmino, Mane, these are the goal scorers. But there's been times, Henderson, not many times, but Henderson, Milner, Fabinho, Origi, Colt Hero might just score an important goal for them. So I, I, I do want to see a bit more different profiles. I do want to see Project Martinelli through the middle. If you could do the scouting thing, I would like us to bring in another striker, but I think it's naive. I know he's young and that, and I know we have young strikers, and he's actually been linked with Bayern Munich. Shout out to Twitch gang, because we was watching the Under-19s Championship 
Rens have a bunch of good players at all levels, 17s to 19s, but they've got tell money. Uh, Matthias Tell, 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 I think, you know, French player, you know, very young, 18, 19, but he, he makes good runs. He drops deep. He plays a bit. He does that Lacazette stuff, but he's a killer in front of goal. He even wears the Benzema thing there. Bayern are trying to get him. Me personally, he should stay at Renz or go somewhere, but I think he's got a decent future. Do I see us without at this moment in time confirming a centre mid and all the other areas? Probably not, but I would bring in Tell, man. I'd bring in Matthias Tell of Renz, man. Again, there's upsell value. Again, he's, he's he's French. You know, you can get something out of these French players in a few years. I'd, yeah, man. I don't know whether Balogun can do a thing. If I'm Balogun, I would want to play for Arsenal. If I'm Arsenal, that would be lit, man, from Renz. But yeah, if I was him, I'd stay at Renz and he'll probably sort himself throughout the season. And if you haven't got, got to know about him, you'll see a lot more of him. But then again, apparently Bayern Munich won him and they can guarantee him 20 games in all comps. So we'll have to see how that one there develops. One love for you lot tuned in with myself on this fine Sunday, people. Where we at in terms of like 90 is good, but it's not great. Come on, people. Come on, what's all that about? I'm there, Ak, man. Tini's injuries are becoming excessive. We have to consider selling next summer. <sighs> you know, I have to be honest. It's still Tini FC. It's still Tini FC. He's still my captain. I'm still not giving up on him, but I'm not going to lie. It was a bitter pill to swallow when you saw that with Arteta. We all know quality is not the question. It's can the man stay fit? I'm still persisting with him. But yeah, man, I can't sit there and, and say and, and say any different, it, it, different in it. You can't. You can't deny the undeniable, but Tierney's my guy, flying Scotsman, fullback union. It's Tierney's club, and we're all living in it now and playing, man. TDFC, man, but yeah, man. On bread, when Tierney comes back and he's flying down that left hand side, remember when Saka scored against City? Who played a key part in that? You man think it don't bread when you see Tierney revival, don't bread, don't bread. Arsenal fans specifically, don't bread when you see Tierney doing his thing. Don't bread if you're. I'm not saying you're turning your back. It's all entertainment, but don't bread. Don't come. Don't. I don't hear nothing. Can't lie. Arteta needs to go to Pep. But you know we're dealing with City now. We must have a decent relationship. We've got Zinchenko. We've got Gabriel Jesus. Indirectly, they might even have first option on Bukayo Saka when the time comes. What are you giving your players though? Like what are you? Because I'm sure if Tini went City like he's been linked with, I'm sure these injuries are gone. What are they, what are they doing over them sides? Alex Oxley Chamberlain was a former former teammate of Arteta. You can't follow the WhatsApp group and see what Pep and um, Klopp sorry is giving these players. There must be some some Bandulu settings we can make happen for Tini, man. So you know, Gabriel, this is a marquee signing. Sorry, I didn't say he's not a marquee signing. He probably is a marquee signing. I don't want it to be the marquee signing. With respect to Hayes, of course it is. You know, and I do think. When you look at our failed pursuit of Rafinha, you know, people were kind of that Arsenal fans specifically kind of downplaying the fact that we got Jesus. But come on, man, they've had us sipping the positive Kool Aid of this Rafinha thing that didn't happen. This Lucas Paqueta, Arsenal fans sold themselves dreams about Gnabry. You know, we all know Sane is not signing for Arsenal Football Club. The dream is free. The house was sold separately. I know spending isn't the be or and end when it doesn't help things. And, you know, we have to be wary of overspending. But come on, man, make it happen. There was even rumours we're looking at Musa Diaby and it could take 45 to 50 million to get that one done. I don't believe that because Leverkusen have an asset. And if they're saying 50 million for the centre-back, that's over. They must realise that Diaby has been in the French squad. He's only going to get better and potentially do the inconcreting. Everyone in Europe at a stage talking about you. So I don't know. be fair, I'm not really convinced on Musa Diaby. Not that he's not a quality player, but yeah. DG, we need to bring in Telemans, Paqueta, Onana and Sane. If only it was that easy, why not? I like the way it's big up, Graham. I like the way Arsenal are going about their business in this window. We aren't being held to ransom and paying over the odds for players. We are taking our time and I think another couple will come in by God's grace, man. Smash the likes like my dude has said. L Sparks, what are you what are you saying, Broski? Zinchenko adds more on the ball quality to the squad. Whether it's in midfield for cup comps or pushing Tini, he's experienced and has something to prove perfect for us. Tell him again. Is what it is. This guy waffles. I'm sorry. I mean, if I waffle, you gotta ask yourself why you're here. The beautiful thing is there's billions of hours of footage on YouTube. So you have to ask yourself on this fine Sunday while you're listening to me. I get it, though, because I know your baby mom's right next to you and she's feeling the kid. She's feeling this chocolate melon and it's OK, B. You know, I know your man's chatting shit in the YouTube comments. He should be taking you picnic or going and doing cocktails. DM me. I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen. Don't let him do the cheap thing, them, them dusty um, two-for-one cocktails either, man. Come on, man. 
It's all right, man. RJ, by God's grace, you know, you do something positive with your life, man. God bless you, my broski. 35 M's is a bit too much, not going to lie. Ah, I hear it. I would... I'm a bit of a cheapskate in this regard, but, you know, 30, 35 million for Zinchenko. Arsenal could do a lot worse. He is 25. You get that on a five-year deal, four years plus another option. You can, you've can you tied him down sort of thing, man. I think, you, I think we could do a lot worse. I would prefer 30, but, yeah, man, could do a lot worse. And to be honest with you, how much were all the other left-backs targets gonna gonna think? You know, again, you could say it's too much. Obviously, to go on the point of us talking about him in midfield, they were obviously we walked away, but did they not offer 35, 40 odd million, maybe even 50 odd million for Lissandro Martinez, who's played significantly less times in at left back than Zinchenko? You know, so if you was gonna do that, this makes sense, if not more to me. So I don't know, man. But I do hope more signings are right. Facts, DG, the mentality they bring important as well. But you're only, bro, you could think about it from, from a working perspective. If you're at, in whatever industry, if you're at a top company, right? You're at a top company, they're trailblazers, everybody's work ethic, everyone's mentality is certain. You leave that company for whatever reason and you join a company that is also recognised, not what it used to be, but it's also recognised. Now, you go there and there's some serious people, there's some people that are serious some of the times. It's not what you want wanted. You alone can't change that. You know, you might be able to help it, but you alone can't change that. You're, you, there is that risk of you dropping to that level. You know, you are what you hang around with, essentially. So they do bring mentality, but I can't like going through my going through that Arsenal team. Whatever you say with their ability, a lot of them have played for their countries, come from certain backgrounds where they face adversity, captained or won stuff, or been in high pressure environments, or been under scrutiny from a very young age. You know, so that for me should give you mentality, anyways. You know, in my opinion. So we'll have to see, man. But great opinions, man. You look cup form as usual. Zinchenko probably going to be our midfield. I'm just hoping we can get a right back, left centre back and, and a left back. Hope so, man. So on quality, we are not there yet. Let's be positive. One day we shall reach there. Tell him as he's getting that. Yo, I'll shout you, bro. Charles. I think we need another two strikers. All the games we're going to be playing is not enough. Two strikers. Nah, nah. One winger slash striker. There's even a, an avenue. It might shake a couple of players, but there's even an avenue for another striker and another winger. But two strikers being a bit greedy now. I mean, bring it, but yeah, man. Smash the like. It really helps the channel. Anthony, come on. You think City are playing the long game, making good connection with the club. So when they come back to the table for Saka or one of our best players in mind, we owe them to make it easier for them. Maybe, you know, maybe. Would it surprise me? That's how life works. Life's about your relationships with people, really and truly. So it makes sense. 119 likes. Keep running that one there up, people. Top form as usual. Twitch gang. It's all breezy. Jack is still suspect. It is what it is. Just woke up from the Mazzolini time yesterday. I hear that. I was up at nine. We need to buy Kevin De Bruyne. I wish we could, man. I'm from London. Shout out to Malaysians. Why are our fans slandering Lacazette over two preseason games? I don't know about that. To be honest, I don't care. Respectfully to Lacazette, he don't play for Arsenal Football Club. And it's not relevant to anything with Arsenal this season. Geez, DG on a Saturday, rate the effort, man, on a day like this. Shout out to you, bro. Ethan, I appreciate that. It's only because you lot are so nice. No point, no point selling Tierney. We just need to make sure his backup is of a good standard. Plenty of players can go before him. I hear that. We got Xhaka El Nene holding at the club, and people want Tierney gone. The best ability is availability. I mean, Marie's always available. Cedric Kintavar is always available. Jack is always available. Shout out to Calvin Bass. He looks like he's got an Ajax, man. Good look for him. Do you like C squad for the squad? I don't know what that means, my guy. Shout out to Melbourne once tuned in. Stay safe in the heat. Let's get Yuri for our midfield. I hear that. I knew DG was going to add the, the last part. I had to, man. I had to. I had to. I had to, man. I had to. I had to. Sunday's the day. Lord, man, he's sending comments in church. Charles. Rather than clean the yard and listen to some lovers rock or satin. Which players you think we should and who should we keep? I mean, it's pretty obvious who needs to leave, isn't it? And, you know, it's pretty obvious at this point with Arsenal who needs to stay, really, you know. If it was on ability, Terrell would stay, but everything's considered, you need to go. 
Pepe, Nelson. It's bad, man. Like, you know, the place is pretty evident at, at this point. We all day, it's, we wouldn't really. It's, at, it's pretty evident who's a good players at Arsenal, really. Like, they're probably the ones that started in the first half to a slight degree, barring the obvious. You know, the one thing where Arsenal is at the moment, you can see through that squad. We all know who, whether they're young or old, we all know who's good enough or who isn't. Mods sort out the prediction from yesterday. I hey, mods, don't be teething people. I do think we are going to play 4 3 3 a bit more. Agenda of City, I hear it, man. Blessings, DJ. I think we're going to get Yuri. Rogers was asked about his contract and he said nothing is on the table, but he continues to train well. Pepe is also linked with the Foxes. Now, I mean, why not? If you could, listen, if you could kill two birds with one stone, do that. But the longer it stays, I don't know what's going on, man. Asane Telemans or Paqueta addition to the team will be okay to end a perfect Arsenal transfer window in a long time. Big up, DJ. You're doing great. I appreciate that, Aluma Day, man. We need a centre defensive mid DG. I mean, we might, but I would prefer an eight or two in this window. People who strengths are more passing the ball forward, but you're not wrong. But I'm prepared to give Lokonga a second season. El Nene has signed a new deal, and the inevitable party injury is going to happen. But I'd say we're better suited to the six row in our in, in terms of looking at our midfield options than breaking down teams. Like even if you was to look at yesterday, Partey did well, and Jack a couple sloppy passes, but he did well. Neither of them have that. Kovacic, that variety, that we're not going to get these names there, but you know, them guys that can continuously play sick passes, like it's second nature to them. Don't get it twisted. Whatever number six comes, you need to be able to pass the ball forward to a degree, and whatever eight comes, you have to be able to do a bit of sick stuff. You know, the midfield role, there's no getting around it. You can't just do the pretty boy or the glamorous stuff, or you can't make it now. We need to sort out the midfield. We can talk about our defence. Goals do win you games where the attackers are concerned, but it's a midfield battle. And Arsenal's probably one of the only teams in the league, respectfully, you don't know what our midfield is. It's not tenacious, it's not technical, it's not a mixture of that, it's not mix and blend, it's not some games this and that. You know, it's flavour of the month. Some months Partey looks better than Xhaka, Xhaka looks better than Partey. You know, El Nene might come in, Lokonga and Ainsley previously last season might get a one-two out in, but there's, we're lacking. And, you know, we'll be here all day talking about the numerous different profiles, but you know, serious midfielders, you know, imagine we had some, just even a small percentage of Santi Cazola's technical level in that midfield and the same extends to Patrick Vieira, two very different sorts of midfielders, take nothing away from Patrick Vieira because the man was bloody good on the football and it, it kind of annoys me when I when I see Sky Sports just talking about the man's physical qualities and stuff, he was a complete midfielder, Patrick was and big up him for doing well in this management thing as well why has it gone quiet on Neves? I don't know, man. Maybe Wolves are pricing him out of a move. You're seeing 75 million. Jack Poe and Onana. Leave Gap quiet yard, man. Would you keep Terrell? If it was just on ability, yeah, but the man don't want to be here, innit? And he's not really going to get an opportunity. So it's a myth now, innit? Like, I think Terrell, but I can't lie. Terrell is better than Onana, respectfully. But all things considered... You need to keep it moving now. All the love dramas and the people hanging around like a bad smell, or the players that evidently don't have futures here. I know every club is going to have them. You can't get rid of everyone for a variety of reasons, but it's it's long now, man. It's time to finish that now, man. It's 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 been done now. We've 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 seen this now, really and truly. It gets boring slightly. What did you make of the hard tackles on the game yesterday? I mean, Lampard was probably galvanising the troops. They did overdo it numerous times. Hopefully no one from Arsenal is hurt. You know, Godfrey, all of them guys, just, just part of my language. Fucking cunts, really, isn't it? Good luck, Everton, man. We'll catch you on the rebound. Maybe there's bad blood for when we dealt with them at the Emirates. Newcastle and Man U bidding 30 million for Ivan Tony. Tony could be decent back off for us for 35. Zinchenko basically covers two signings for the price of 35. I'm calling that a bargain. And for Zinchenko, like you said, you've got a point to prove. Can you show that you're a fullback able to play in midfield? Or what you probably are by trade, a midfielder who can do a job at left back and obviously for a variety of reasons had to do that at City. Like someone said, him and Jesus definitely got points to prove. Yeah, I did see I did see Arteta casting Ainsley Maitland now. And I would say, Based on the second half subs, with the exception of El Nene and two of the, I don't think Waters did amazing, but he's young, discount him. I don't think the Pepe's, the Nelson, I only saw Nelson when it came to back in the beef, really. Um, Ainsley, I don't think any of them 
laid down a marker and really gave Arteta food for thought. I think Saliba did, but that's because, you know, it looks like he could have a future. It looks like these players, unfortunately, days are numbered, really. But yeah, I did see that, man. And this is why Ainsley can't play in midfield, bro. You're not passing the ball forward more times than El Nene. You're in trouble if you're doing that. Shout out to El Nene because he seems a bit more confident in that regards now. Our midfield is party. TG moving old school with Lovers Rock on a Sunday. You hear that? I right, come on, man. I mean, you know, fun memories of just coming in and just hearing my mother and, and father playing them songs there after Sunday, man. You know, is what it is. That's what people should be doing. Just call in, grab a brandy and just call off, man. You know, if you don't like brandy, get some white rum. But instead, people want to talk nonsense. It's YouTube, eh? You know, let's not let one individual spoil it. We definitely need a right winger and another defensive mid with Zinchenko and Telemans. Pair of you on this defensive mid. I would like Levermento. He's going to cost a pretty penny. Gusto of Leon, they're probably in no rush to get rid of him. I would like him, you know, but he's going to cost a pretty penny. Our midfield is Partey, and I think Mar Partey is a quality player. I think we can all agree. But much like Tierney and, to a degree, Tomiyasu based on last season, the biggest problem is when you're not involved and the knock-on effects, whether that's you not staying fit or Arsenal not having proper quality to, to, to really be there, really. You know, and for Partey last season, there was a period he was really playing well, man. It might have been when the injury came. Or it might have been when just before AFCON and he came back from AFCON, did the typical Arsenal thing, got sent off and then carried on doing what he was doing. So if it the mic there, people, it might, I don't remember which one, but there was a second Partey looked really good. Especially he was doing a box-to-box -box role thing, but there was a time he was playing like a lone six. He was really seeing it. I don't know what's going on there, man, but... It is where it is, man. Hopefully the guy can stay fit. New season optimism and that. Been missing a player like Santi for the longest. It is what it is. Nevers don't like celebrating goals, so he can't join us. You man are still on to him. Join the stream, DG, so forgive me. You're forgiven. Don't ask for forgiveness again. You get there when you get there. If Forgive forgive me if you've already answered this. If we sign Zinchenko, do you see us getting Yuri Telemans? I don't, but I want to be proven wrong, really. And on one hand, as much as I say I don't, surely we do because, I mean, Arsenal have a history of dotting I's and crossing T's and for whatever reason, players are not holding shirts. But we found out a few months ago, last summer, we was trying to get Telemans done. His agent spent a lot of time at the Emirates and London Coley. We heard the same in January. We heard the same this this summer. We hear the man wants to sign. Personal terms are all but done. They're not an issue. It only seems like the thing is to get Leicester to commit to a deal. I don't know why Leicester may or may not be holding it up. So on one hand, surely you're not going to do all of this unless you, you, you want the man and you hear he wants to sign for the club. But the longer it goes on, goalposts start shifting. As I said, I can't see us getting Paqueta, Zinchenko, Telemans and all of that. But yeah, man. We got 200 likes yet. No, 147. Slowly but surely wins the race, or whatever the smart guy said. And Ketty was on smoke. It's from South, mate. We hijacked the Zinchenko deal because of West Ham and Everton. I mean, I don't want to. It's no, it's no fun if you're saying hijacking them clubs. He does play as a midfielder. And to be honest, you know, you look at Arteta. Arteta kind of played Tommy Asu as a midfielder. He steps into midfield. Zinchenko could do that on the left hand side. But there's an Arsenal tax. We're not going to be dominating games like City. You know, he's going to have a lot more defending to do. So we're going to have to see what's going on. But we could do a lot worse. And respectfully, to move in Saka to left back, which kills us in an offensive sense, putting Cedric over there, putting Tom Tomiyasu, who can do it and is an exception over there, uh, Tavares definitely betting on Tierney's fitness. We could do a lot worse than Zinchenko playing for Arsenal Football Club and being an option at left back. That's just me, though. Saliba looked lit yesterday, pre-season tax, but he did well, as I said. Do you miss Vlahovic? I can't miss what I never had, did it? Vlahovic don't play, never played for Arsenal. How much realistically, if we are to sell Bellerin, Ainsley, Marie, Torreira, Leno, whatever you think they're getting, they probably have to discount Bellerin. I think we're going to have to accept peanuts, isn't it? And we can console ourselves with the fact of, you know, we've had him for a number of years. He's won some FA Cups and, you know, what we, we must have paid a couple thousand max for him. You know, if he sold for five million quid, we all know it's not enough considering what we could have got once upon a time. But they'll console themselves with that. He's got a year left and he's got mad wages. So I would say seven to ten million for Bellerin, but I probably half that. Marie, again, the wages kind of mess it up really and truly. He's got a year left on his deal. Maybe we kind of do what we did in January. If we can't find a permanent deal for him, we just take a loan fee of a couple of million. He's parked off in Italy or somewhere. You know, he's been linked with Italy, Spain and, and Portugal and actually Turkey in, in the last few weeks. So we might just park him off there. 
Torreira, boy, considering he had a decent season in Italy, 14 million, it seemed like a no-brainer. Every week you've seen Juventus, Fiorentina, Roma, uh, Valencia, you know, there's always Italian and Spanish clubs linked with him, but for a variety of reasons, I don't know, man, I'd hope to get 14, 15. I think we should be getting a lot more, but we're at where we're at with that. Ainsley, psh, we're here and we want 8 million. Another one you could have parked off to Wolves or Everton for a decent premium, but didn't. Leno, boy, I think 15 million is a fair price. Fulham are saying 11, so draw of that what you will. So, it, it, not that much, but every little helps, I guess. So, yeah, man. We should swap Pepe and get both Telemans and Madisons. If it was that easy, why not, man? I don't believe Milinkovic Savage but rumors, but he would be a good midfielder for us. Do you think Arsenal will replace Pablo Marie when he leaves? Probably, but I don't know which centre back they're gonna go for. I don't really if they sign it, it is what it is, but I don't see the need to spend fifty odd million or a mad price. You know, Max, can you just find someone that has a similar profile but twenty five odd million? Like we should be able to find that. You you know, you've got Saliba, you spent fifty million on Ben White, you spent thirty on Gabriel. I'm not against it. Can you get someone a bit experienced that really knows how to defend. I don't really see what we're going with that. So, probably. Arteta does seem fixated on, I need a left foot on the left-hand side, a right foot on the right-hand side. Of course, you've got players that can play there. I hope he is. But even if it's Saliba, Ben White, Gabriel, that's still light in defence, you know. If some if someone gets suspended, one's got the flu, one's form is on the floor, we're in trouble. And there were times where I think Gabriel and Ben White did well. And obviously, there was times where someone did a bit better, but there was times where they both could have been dropped out of the team. So, I still think you'd need a bit more. Tommy Asu can play centre-back. You can go to a back three that opens up potentially Kieran Tierney even playing there if it. Um, Xhaka has felt in there. I'm not really with that. You've got Holden, who, if it's not really a back three, you don't really want to hear it. But yeah, man. Matt Turner's positioning and shot-stopping does look suspect, but hopefully as he stays and develops and, and whatnot, he can get a bit more comfortable and kind of somewhat prove us wrong. Why did Twitch randomly close? Or better yet, my Twitch stream manager. Sorry, folks. That was that about. Oh, we're back. Fair enough. Fair enough, we're back. Dropping both your main centre-backs is mad. I'm not saying drop both of them. I'm saying there's times where both could have been dropped. You know, you look at Liverpool, Canate had to wait and there was a second Canate got in there. He couldn't buy a game once because Matip's form. Van Dijk is obviously Van Dijk. Joe Gomez has signed a new deal and he's there. You need options. Levi Colwell's lit, but yeah, man, you know, if I was Levi Colwell, it doesn't make sense leaving Chelsea to sign for us, really. If you want to go for a pathway, Brighton want you, Palace want you, Southampton want you, get significantly more game time, even if... You should, I think you should try Leicester. You know, I think any, I'm not a Leicester fan, but it looks like they're on this rebuild thing, really. And their defense last season, through injuries or whatever, was a shambles. So, something to explore, man. I have to give Arteta props for trying back free. Uh, not really, because when you first came in, you was doing that. We should have done that already. And, you know, a manager should be multifunctional. And there was times we should have done that last season. So, yeah, man, I would like Paqueta, but it's easier said than done. I do like Maribu. I think he played in pre-season yesterday. Um, not quite sure why it hasn't hit off for him, you know, after leaving Barca. But the talent's there. And obviously, if you facilitate it, Cream always rises to the top. Zinchenko has never played a full season. He's always been injured or something or other or others pop up. If we get him, he's massively inconsistent. He has a good skill set, but we sign players with injuries. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I do like to seek the truth. So we're taking that to VAR. Injury. History. Let's actually see. You might be onto something. Oh, shit. Hey. To be fair... You, this is why I like you lot. Take me back. Elite. What do we make of this, folks? Now, again, since 1819, he's had a like just by reading that, he's had a number of injuries. Let's exclude the C bomb, because you know, you say that word on YouTube, you start getting demonetized with. So I'll exclude him the 30 days and the four games missed. He had an unknown injury here as well. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but was this around the time it came out around Ukraine? I don't want to be ignorant, people, but that might be why games were missed and things like that. Um, fitness, knocks, quarantine, knock, muscle injuries. Well, I can't lie, he has missed a lot of games, isn't it? But 
Yeah. He's had two fights, it's five strains. Last season, he missed 11 games. No, I'm lying to you. 10 games. Let me be like, I can't count. 10 games. He missed 10 games last season for an unknown injury, fitness, and COVID. The season before that, he missed a number of games, really. 2020, 2021 wasn't a good year for him. That is something to consider. Oh, shit, you got two pages. That is a that is something to consider then, boy. Shit. Shit. Good point, man. Shout out to you. This is why I got some of the realest fans. We're going to make sure we put that in the timestamp as well. Sinchenko injury history concern. You lot make the content. There we have it. Good for good port. Good for uh, you're scaring me a bit now with that man. That list is looking kind of long. I would love Rashford. Allow me, DG. Based on the current completed transfers, what's your starting eleven? I mean, I don't think anything changes. What's been completed? I think in terms of what's actually been completed is it's just Gabriel Jesus. Assuming everybody's fit, you know who it is already. Ramsdale in goal, Tini on the left, Tommy Asu on the right. I do think it would be Ben White and Gabriel initially, but I would like Saliba and Gabriel. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, in midfield, you haven't got Zinchenko over the line or Telemans for all that chat, so it's still probably Odegaard, Xhaka and Thomas Partey. On the left and the right, it probably should be Martinelli at this moment in time off the left, but Emil Smith-Rowe off the left, Saka off the right. Gabriel is just through the middle, really. We're linked with Jeremy Doku. I'm not sure of him. Still waiting to be confirmed, man. We need an experienced third goalie, maybe even second. Feel like Fabio Vieira is a luxurious transfer. Odegaard will be starting over him. I think he'll be there for rotation slash squad depth. He says he plays 10, so he should be putting pressure on Odegaard's, Odegaard's spot. Um, on, on, Odegaard's, on Odegaard's spot. Um, you know, he can play as an eight. And if we get some midfielders in his competition, but he might be a luxury man. So you don't rate Ben White. Where did I say I don't rate Ben White? I do like Ben White. I do think fans have been harsh on him. I just would like to see Gabriel and Saliba. I don't think anyone's clear of them. I think in the current options, maybe because he's left-footed and I just like how Gabriel defends, even though he does mad things. Gabriel plays. I like Saliba as a footballer. I like Ben White, but, you know, I would like to see Gabriel and Saliba, but I just want the best of the of the the, um, the best of the, the two best of the three to play. You know, the four might even be so well where them two are playing. Ben White goes over to right back. I think Ben White's going to have to do a lot of game time at right back at some point. The injury record is techie, COVID, wolf, C-word discount, six games missed isn't the worst, though. It's true. It's mainly that 2020-21 season, the season before last. Shout out, take me radio for, for pointing out that fact. Take into account City play 60 games a season. So 10 ain't, that ain't too bad. I hear that. Someone asked, Harvey Barnes can be grabbed for less than 45 million, apparently, Forts DG. Good player, but nah. If he signed for us, why not? But nah. Ben White is injured, so Shaliba should take his opportunity and impress Mikel in preseason to get the chance to start against Palace. I hear that. Gabriel is aggressive like a bulldog. We need that kind of defender. Cannot rely on Eddie for second striker. Going to have to see, man. Bless DG. I got scared from that list of injuries. <laughs> Zinchenko over Xhaka in midfield Yeah, because they're almost identical for their passing metrics Xhaka's more rugged and wins more tackles So maybe not, but I would like to see it You know, Xhaka needs competition for that for that spot We hardly ever buy players that the normal football supporter would know That's why I was so surprised when we signed Jesus Brilliant signing, says skills Cedric might be playing first game of the season What's happening with Tommy Asu? Smash the like button, please, people. 174 likes. We're moving ever closer towards 200. Thoughts on Lissandro Martinez for United? I think he'll do well there. He knows the manager, knows a couple of the players. Aggressive, seems a good reader of the game, seems an intelligent learner of the game based on what you read in terms of reports. Can play in a couple of roles, good on the ball. There will be games his lack of height's an issue, but that's just like a slow centre-back. There's going to be games your lack of pace is an issue. I think he'll be all right for them, man. Do you think Arsenal will sign Telemans or is it becoming a myth? I hope we do, but 
Honestly, I don't know. Get the lights up. Word to stylish. Shout out to you for that one, my guy. What other comments? I don't want to miss anyone else. Anyone else? DG, we need to fix the mentality of the team for the starting 11. Amen. Easier said than done, really. And to be honest, the players have... It's got to tick for these players, you know, really as well. If we keep Pepe, is it worth playing him centrally alongside Jesus, especially when we play on the counter against the big six? I don't think, Michael, we could do any of that until we address that midfield, really, you know, because you're going to need your midfield to do even double the work, especially if Pepe's there. I don't think we're going to see it, in it. I think if we were to see the Pepe playing central thing, we would have seen it. We probably would have even, I don't even know if he was fit, but we would have even seen it when we played Villarreal in the semi-finals and Smith Rowe, Smith Rowe went as a false nine by hotel. Essentially, I was always linked. Which area should Saliba improve his game? Well, you're not the finished article, so the lazy answer is everything. Saliba needs to improve everything. There's not a damn thing he's a, he's world class at, and that comes with the territory. He's a 21 year old, you know. Needs to, for me, just based on what we saw at Marseille, um, it's difficult how to make it make sense. I think for someone in the air, I think he could be a bit more commanding. I think sometimes he's a bit too confident on the ball. I think he's improved his reading of the game, but his marking can be tighter, especially when dragged out wide. Just general little touch-ups, really and truly, if I'm completely honest with you. I think at times he can get caught flat-footed as well and has to make a number of recovery tackles, but these are things you'd expect in a young in a young player, really and truly. I don't think he's... I think he's going to learn some harsh lessons, just like Ben White and Gabriel. They're not going to be amazing week in, week out. None of them have crossed into that territory of a player yet, but... If, and I don't like the word if, Arteta can improve some of these players and get a tune out of them with their resale value and their potential and all of them things, we should be in good stead, in theory. I don't think it's overpaying. We could do a lot worse. I don't know if he'll play centrally. You'd imagine Zinchenko will get significant game time in the middle of the park for Arsenal. And I think sometimes he can be a bit too, like, he can follow the ball a bit too much, a bit too excited to play football. But this is the thing. People that are gassing up Saliba, they're going to be the first to turn on him like they do. I think, I think football fans are so ridiculous. They do it with all these young players at our football club and every other club. He's going to have bad games. He's going to have good games. He's not the finished article, really. And they're, they're the first one, the, the ones that were hitting Arteta over the top of their head saying, oh, he's got to play He's got to play Saliba. He's got to play Saliba. They'd be like, oh, he's overrated. They did it with Balogun. They did it with Nelson, whether they're right or wrong. They used to do it with Saka. Saka can't play right wing. La, la, how did that work out? They did it with Smith Rowe. Remember the first half of the season for Smith Rowe when he was scoring? Remember Brighton away? People need to relax. Everyone's going to get going to get game time. Everyone's going to have good and bad games. This is why you need a squad, especially if you're young and volatile like everything, man. He's going to need a platform. He's going to learn some harsh lessons, you know. Uh, Diaby, who us and United have been linked with, of, of Le Dembele, sorry, of Lyon, gave him a tough time. I remember a couple of years ago, who was that guy? Uh, I forgot his name now, but he played Saliba against Mets a couple of years ago. Got absolutely torn a new one. There was a game even in, in even in, even in for Marseille, gave away a free kick at the dying embers of the game and they went and used that set piece to score. I do think Saliba returns a more confident, a, more, a better player, a more complete player, a more confident player a more resolute player, and he shined for Marseille. But if he was watching Marseille, he was in a shit's defensive side. They were very volatile defensively, pardon my French. Much like when he was playing under, was it under Vieira them times at Nice? Even younger squad. So there's some bad habits he's going to learn. He's never been in a necessarily a good defensive side for as good as Leon did. Um, but yeah, man, he looked so graceful yesterday, man. It's just general touch-ups. I wouldn't say there's... Marking for me would be the one, especially caught flat-footed especially from corners, I would say marking. Because as a defender, if your marking's all right and you're always aware, you can get away with that. I would say the marking. And, and I would say sometimes, because he's such a good player on the football, when it's a when it's a football thing, he, he wants to play football a bit too much. you got to kind of think like a defender first sort of thing, if that makes sense. But Saliba's lit, man. But they do need to react. He's playing some, there's some serious hitters in the Prem. Serious hitters. Serious it is. 600 people and we're not even at 300 likes doing DG Dirty. That's it's every day, man. We need a backup right back and right wing 100%. Jesus and Pepe have not been on the same pitch yet in two friendlies. Boy, facts, DG. So I'm even, again, Russian Norton Coffee, bro. Brooke, just let Brooke develop. If he got slapped in, you never know, players can surprise you, but if Brooke got slapped in at White Hart Lane or Newcastle, the same fans crying about and crying about, that would be the first ones to turn on him. 
You know, I could tell you for free, if Brooke Norton Coffee plays tomorrow, he's going to get picked apart on the ball. Sometimes plays with his head down, sometimes not aware of his shoulders. There's no, he's a good athlete, but it's one Bissaka settings at this moment in time. That's not a criticism of him. People really underestimate the time needed and the level that is the Premier League. I would like to see him play. Let the man there develop, man. Half of the people couldn't tell you two games they've watched of him at Lincoln and they're ready to be experts. How can you draw so many conclusions on Balogun, who hasn't played Premier League football at the time, and then six months at Middlesbrough, six months in Brook Norton, Coffey's case at um, um, at Fingy, um, at Lincoln. Let them and they develop. They're all 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm not saying don't judge accordingly, but <sighs> football fans are crazy, man. Football's a difficult old game, man. I see it all the time. Even when the news about Amari came up, like I was just looking at my mentions, like, I can't even tell you why, but I know you're captain. Like, it is what it is, though, man. Life. Such is life. And he does get skinned every night. He's not invincible, blood. He's not invincible. That's it. Diallo, he ripped him. Exactly. Ripped him. Strengthed him. Wasted him. Outpaced him. Again, when for me, when Saliba's pulled into wide areas, sometimes he can get get in trouble. You know, a bit like us. Sometimes Marseille play a high line, everyone gets on the ball. Sometimes I think he's he's, he's in trouble there. I do think he makes a lot of last ditch defending tackles and actions to save his teammates. But yeah, man, you know you can't draw conclusions on the Premier League. For me, to know how good a defender is, it's when we're in them Calas games, them Crystal Palaces away, where it's just balls into the box, defense is disillusioned. Especially, you know, as a as a defender, you got to be good with the ball at your feet now and bring it out. Everyone can do it when the sun's shining and the fans are onto you. Only certain man in this team can do it when there's there's every reason not to play good today. And I think Saliba has that mentality. And I hope, you know, we can put a marker. He's arrived now. We went, He went back to St Etienne. He went Nice. He went Marseille. Hopefully we're here now, innit? And to be honest, you know, it's like being a chef. If you're a chef, if you want to be a Michelin star chef and have a restaurant and everything, you're going to cut your hand a couple of times, you know? You're going to cut your hand a couple of times. As a defender, anyone that you tell me is a quality defender and you can't tell me when they've had a bad game, they're not a good defender. They're not. The only place you can afford not to get something wrong while learning, while learning in theory, is probably heart surgery because obviously one slip of the hand and someone's dead in it, but it's all brazy. So, yeah, man, Saliba can be a serious player, but allow it, man. Half of the squad, there's going to be months where a couple players defensively and offensively are playing better than others. You saw it last year. There was time Smith Rowe was the one, Odegaard was the one. They were shining together. Saka had his little thing. Martinelli came into the team. Towards the end of the season, Eddie Nketiah announced himself somewhat. You know, there was times Ben White was the guy. There was times Saliba, not Saliba, Gabriel was the one. Tommy Asu was the one. There was better or worse moments from Aaron Ramsdale, you know, in the season. Tavares has been consistently booky, but there was better periods even for him. And even the more experienced players, there was times Partey was the name on everyone's lips. Um, pause. Um... In midfield, credit where due, you had to give Xhaka his flowers for a sec. And some of these players are not young, but it's a squad game. So we have to see what's going on, man. Nelson might go back to Holland. Every defender needs to always improve their reading of the game so you don't have to make large ditch tackles. Come on, y'all, smash the like button. Balogun needs another loan to a lower Premier League team to get more experience. If you could do that or make send him to a top five team, great. If not, I think you should send him back to Middlesbrough, provided I don't know if Chris Wilder is still there. He wanted him at Sheffield United. He knows him. I think he played significantly at, at Middlesbrough. Don't think he done anything. Really. Obviously, you could look at on a lazy one and say, is there a record of goals? He scored a good finish against Birmingham. And there's definitely another one in there, but didn't, didn't pull up any trees. And it's harsh, obviously, to look at these games, Middlesbrough tax and stuff. But these are the oppositions you're playing week in, week out. When he played Chelsea, when he played United, when he played Spurs, they didn't do nothing. I'm sure against United, actually, when he came off, they looked a bit better, respectfully, to Balogun. It's not a disrespect. You know, for all the hype and all the goals you score in 23, this is a different ball game. You try and outpace someone, they're, they're, they're faster than you. you. Try to use your strength, they're stronger than you. You've got to use this. A run that you might make to, to score goals in, in every day of the week works at under-23's level. It might not work when someone's experienced. You've got to remember the levels, not just in the Prem, but just looking at the Championship. And you've got to remember the mentality. Balogun's going into a realm now where if you lose at 23's level, it's ah, all right. Yeah, there might be a London derby or a big game or the occasional cup and, and all them things there. The manager might be watching, but it's all right. There's tomorrow. 
obviously, man are getting relegated in the championship and lower you go. And that has a knock-on effect for the wages and everything. These are high-pressure environments. This is seeing what football's about, especially when you're not at Arsenal, where it must be wavy, you know. Everything's provided. I'm not saying middles, but don't. But you know when you're at the Arsenals, the Chelsea's, the United's, the Cities, the Spurs, everything is different. The drip is different. Everything is different. You see a bit of what harsh reality is like. And also... 23's football, you're not playing consistently. You bat it up on the Friday when you're next in action the next week. If you bat it up midweek in the championship, that's cool, but you've got to do it on the weekend. The fans don't care. And on top of that, the fans don't care that it's young Balogun can develop in Hayland. They see, oh, what, your Arsenal youngster, yeah? Come score goals. If you're not scoring goals, this is it. Just like with Lincoln and the Lincoln fans are loving Brook Norton Coffee. Oh, you're, you're a defender from Arsenal, yeah? Cool, show some levels. People don't understand this football thing, man. Some footballers are going to be here and survive and be well. Some players are going to have to go elsewhere. Some players are going to develop at different rates. Just look at Saka, Reese Nelson, Smith, Rowe and Eddie and Kea. And go through the last few years. Apart from Saka, your thoughts have probably changed on all of them. You know, Smith Rowe, I remember he started away at Everton under Arteta. Well, technically when Arteta was appointed, I think Lomberg was there. Didn't do nothing. Went to Huddersfield for a second. Came back 30, you know. Eddie and Kitter did nothing at Leeds. I actually think he improved against Leeds, um, at Leeds, because he did come back stronger. And I remember there was a period under Arteta um, where I think Saka played very well against Newcastle and, and uh, Everton at, at home. I think Nketi had started them games, but he didn't do much. You know, Smith Rowe took a while. Saka's them gems. He's just always going to be lit, you, you know. It is, well, it is some players stagnant. And that's where sometimes... We have to know when to sell Dons. Like, I'm not saying Joe Willock isn't going to be a madness, but him selling him and it will be at the right time. You could have got some serious change for Ainsley Maitland now once upon a time. Not now. Develop these talents. Reese Nelson, he's, he's, he still can have a career, but he's not pulled up any trees and things like that. Maybe we should have been a scenario where you could get 15, 20 million for him and cut and keep it moving, even though I'd do everything for Reese to still have an opportunity at Arsenal, but you probably need to cut out now. If I'm completely honest. Youngest of thoughts. So, yeah, man. It's what it is. A lot of spamming thing, my God, man. You're moving mud. DG, you think Arteta will use free at the back more next season? I think he needs to, especially when we get into them tricky periods, like towards the end of the season. You have to ask him. I don't know. I don't understand either how we got 40 million for a world we but we did, didn't it? Maybe the JJ or Koch, I'm JJ or Koch's nephew still works really. With this core squad, can we realistically contend in a few seasons? If you keep improving and you keep, you know, marrying them together, is you know, maybe, but that's easier said than done. And boy, you need to be qualifying for Champions League and getting through to latter stages of things before we talk about contending. I don't know for Balogun to QPR rumors, but that could be lit. Yeah, if he does go to Bayern, yeah, that's lit. Has it been confirmed? That's lit. We don't need a backup right back. We need a starter. I've got love for Tommy, though. I hear that. Everyone hates on Nuno, but as you said, there was times when man was saying he's better than Tavares. Yeah, them fans that sipped the hippie juice were screaming that one day. Hate to say it, but I'm looking forward to your role part. It allowed Smith and Saka to develop. Need to use it to build the likes of Sambi, Eddie, Nuno and Balogun. I hear you, but I'll be real with you. If I'm Nuno and Balogun and you're just waiting on to play Europa League, especially Balogun, you're not going to have this. You never know. Things could fall into place. But, and you you know, Eddie, circumstances happen and now he signed a new deal and it's happened. But if I just, without predicting the future, you need to go and say, go somewhere and play where you can say, I'm going to play 20, 30 league games, however many in all comps. If you can't say that at Arsenal Football Club, then unless the mad thing happens where there's injuries, you take your chances and that happens, then you're wasting your time, really. Even if you get the occasional Europa League game. Because once it turns serious and we get to the knockout stages, you man are not, you're gonna get bandilied. So yeah, man. It's all mad. Need two level raises, one in centre mid and one as a wide forward. Saliba does look like a B. Shout out the members, shout out Paul. Hey DG, hope you are well on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. It was good to see Saliba play. I hope he gets the chance to play and grow and cement his, his place in the team. But we must give time. Amen. And rightly so. Rightly so. Hopefully he could. Oi, to be fair, why didn't you lot say we're at 200 likes? I'm disrespecting you lot. Can we get to 300? Why didn't you lot say that, man? You lot are rude. Nobody told me. Promises are promised. One second, people. 
Okay, Twitch. Am I Twitch gang? Am I okay on your end? Just said alert. Don't know what that's about, but cool. Anyways, let's move on. Someone could have told me it's all this about, folks. Let's get to 300 transfer news. That's a timestamp. Let's press that again for Arsenal. Don't seem like there's any other news that's come out in this last hour, folks. So I think we're just rolling with what we predetermined. I think we're just, yeah, we are. All right, calm, 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 calm. Oh, sorry, folks. Stand on me. I think I'm frozen. Who's doing the ducky thing? Anywho, let's go, people. I think we're going to have to roll with what we can. Oh, we're still, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on, man. Sorry, people. I think just when we've got to the end, eh? Just when we've, we've done the hard part. Well, I say end, you know what I mean. Sorry, people. All right, cool. I think I'm blessed. No, I'm not. One sec. Everything Kushti? Savage or Paqueta? Paqueta's Brazilian, but probably Savage, you know. Hopefully we're all good and, and, and ready to go again, man. But yeah, that tells me let's get a move on in it. So yeah, it all depends where you read people, but you know, depending on whatever you want to read, you know, this article, we don't know how credible they are. Arsenal eyeing 59 million pound move for Bayern Munich star Leroy Sane. Arsenal are eyeing a move for Bayern Munich winger Leroy Sane, according to reports. Again, people just trying to get us to subscribe to their, their thingy. Um, apparently, Mikel Arteta is keen to add a winger to his squad. Apparently, Ben Jacobs of CBS Sports claims Sane is one of a number of targets for the Gunners, with Chelsea and Real Madrid also interested in the ex-Manchester City man. A move to La Liga could be more likely. I've not heard rumblings at Chelsea's end. I've actually heard more rumblings from Arsenal that this was a name being considered at the beginning of the window, but when they turned their attentions, but then they turned their attention, sorry, to Rafinha. So we'll have to see. He got seven goals and seven assists in 32. He's not as prolific as you would think, Leroy Sane. But yeah, pouring hot water on this, people. You know, apparently Sane's not interested in Real Madrid or Arsenal. I think he would be interested in Madrid, but not quite us. He's been linked with us. He's contracted until 2025. And with Lewandowski out the door and Gnabry signing a new deal, probably that's where it's come from, people. Um, poured hot, co poured cold water on this, people. Apparently, this, uh, this journalist has said... This he, apparently it said, in fact, Osclough, I can't say his name, Toby, whoever, ended up saying that story leaked on him joining the Gunners or Madrid are absurd. He does not think there is any chance of him leaving the club. His departure is going to be difficult in any case because his market value is slightly more than 70 million. So if we did get Zinchenko, Telemans to go with whatever we spent on Gabriel Jesus, Fabio Vieira, and you could even add Paqueta. Maybe it would be we'd leave Paqueta and go for him. I can't see us finding the money for him. And even if you did, you have to convince Sane to want to play. Yes, Mikel Arteta has worked with him. But if Sane is available, Europe's elite will be on to a minute, really and truly. So it'd be lit having Sane. I know some people, more people than I than I expected, aren't quite keen on him. But yeah, man, Ben Jacobs is a is a is a fraud. Connection was moving hella brazy there, but it seems that we're back. So yeah, make of that what you will, people. Fabrice Romano has said talks between Marseille and Arsenal for Nuno Tavares are not progressing. No agreement as there was no buy option included. Marseille already focused on other targets. So, yeah, man, he might, you know, Tavares might have to find a new home to go and play football at, really. You know, then Marseille. And we were linked with Calvin Bassi. Calvin Bassi has chosen Ajax. I wonder what ramifications that has for Brighton sanctioning the sale of Cucurella and likewise City sanctioning Zinchenko. You need several targets. Calvin Bassi, I mean... From humble beginnings, he almost gave up playing football. And to see him now playing in a European final, playing for a massive club like Rangers, and now going to Ajax, you can be happy for the lad. Uh, again, if you're a United fan, or even if you're an Arsenal fan, in relation to Lissandro Martin, there's apparently that deal has been completed and signed. So that, that saga is done, people. I'm only looking just to see if Fabrizio Romano has other things here for us, people. We was always linked with Manuel Solomon. He seems to be going Fulham. Apparently, Arteta's confirmed Saliba's in the plans. I think I've got them. I'm trying to see if there's an update on Zinchenko by his end. It doesn't seem like there is. 
Pardon me. Well, sorry, 23 hours ago, Arsenal and City have reached an agreement for Zinchenko in the morning. 30 million fee. No doubt it's done between clubs. Negotiations ongoing on the player side for personal terms and salary details. You've also got to remember he's flown to America. We're in America, so it should give us a bit of leeway in there. Once again, maybe his injury records, Zinchenko's injury records, provokes fear in you lot people. Because he, he did he was out with the C-bomb last season and he was out with an unknown injury. But 20... 2021, he did have a number of knocks there, people, and the rap sheet is quite long. Hopefully, that's not an issue. It would be Arsenal to sign another player that has injury issues, even though I don't think Zinchenko has that. Uh, no, I want to go to this, people. What's this? Same thing with Zinchenko. Arsenal closing on 35 million sweep for Manchester City. Zinchenko following productive talks on to paper next week he's expected to leave man city to join rivals arsenal rivals uh further productive talks were held on saturday with the deal set for next week hopefully he can you know obviously sign before thursday so that he could potentially play against Orlando and chelsea on sunday um and just quick just get bedded in the team quicker rather than you rather than rather than later apparently the 25 year old is hoping for more game time after playing 15 times last season Arteta is keen to bring in Zinchenko to add versatility within his squad. The pair obviously work together during Arteta's time at sea. He's expected to sign for first. Monday is the thing, people. But again, I haven't heard, you know, probably not. Hopefully Wednesday, because you haven't heard anything around medicals and things like that. But we've progressed, you know, from verbal. We've heard verbal agreement. Talks are more productive. We just need I's dotted and T's crossed now and people holding shirts. Uh, personal terms are not expected to be a problem for the Ukraine international who stands a chance to become our fifth signing and our second from Man City following Gabriel Jesus. His departure will accelerate City's bid for Brighton defender Cucurella. Arteta allegedly said we are hoping to improve the team and make a few more changes, people. Apparently Zinchenko... He's previously been reluctant to leave, allegedly. He only played 15 times in the league. As City won the Premier League last season, and you've also got you could have Cucurella in front of you, and also Cancelo ahead of you, who's great on the left and the right. Uh, Sportsmail revealed Arsenal's interest in May, and he's valued at 35 million by City. The two clubs are now close to thrashing out a deal with an announcement expected early next week. And you can see back in May, Daily Mail said Arsenal considered double sweep for Zinchenko and Jesus. One of the first rumors that's actually one rang true. He was only on 30k a week at City. Uh, yeah, so it's not going to break the bank here. And he is a good signing for us, matter of fact. So, yeah, he does bring versatility. He has won a number of uh, trophies at City, you know, all of that sort of tosh. Apparently, Arteta said the message is this. This is a different season and everyone has a clean start. Show us what you can do on the pitch. How are you going to behave with your teammates? Are you going to make the car faster? Yes or no? If you do, if you do, you have a chance to be here. For me to send a different message to the group was to be very, very consistent with what we demand. So, yeah. Whatever that means. Yuri Telemans. Apparently, Yuri Telemans set for Leicester City talks at mid-Arsenal links with free transfer possible. Let's see if the headline matches the article. We all know he's at the, you know, one minute he's joining Arsenal, then United. Apparently, Brendan Rodgers said there was no update to provide on the club's contract negotiations with Telemans, which began 18 months ago. We're at where we're at. In fact, the man said there's no update at all. He's an amazing guy to work with. He's just rejoined the club for pre-season and he's pretty much the same. In training, he's very committed. He's happy with his work. He's happy at the club. But naturally, with a year in his contract, he may feel he has to look at everything for him and his family. But I certainly know he's committed here while he's here. He has allegedly put his house up for sale. Allegedly. I'll have a good chat with Yuri next week to um, to get privately what he's thinking. But it won't change whether he's leaving or staying for another five years. He's super committed. When commi asking him staying and fulfilling the final 12 months of his deal, I'm not sure for that to happen. That means there's no acceptable offer or there hasn't been an offer. That's the reality. So what is that indirectly telling you? Arsenal, have, Arsenal haven't tabled an offer or they haven't made an acceptable offer. So we'll have to see what's going on there. Until that changes, I'll give everything to keep develop, developing him and the team. There's a possibility, but we have to wait and see. Once again, people... He has been Leicester City's most used outfield player by some distance over the past two seasons. 95 starts coming in, 25 more than any other player. He did also help them win the win the win the FA Cup beating Chelsea. So it's more brownie points. Uh, Mikel Arteta promises Saliba the chance to become Arsenal first team star. Um, I'm not going to read that. I'm pretty sure I've got that on the Athletic. It feels good to be back. What Saliba said after his game, where he did quite well against Everton. 
We talked a bit on Monday and we are going to talk more in relation to Mikel Arteta. My plan is to fight and work with the team, win as much as possible and grow more. It feels good to be back and start pre-season, to continue training and participating in friendly matches. It's important to be here with the fans as well as with my teammates. I hope we enjoy good training and good matches, which is important before the start of the season. And I do like his mentality, even down to when he was a youth man at St Etienne. He's grabbing the microphone, gassing up the fans. We need this. So I just have a real good positive feeling about Saliba as a footballer, not just at Arsenal. So, yeah, he also spoke on, you know, we spoke about this yesterday. Go and check out last live stream when he said he's on loan, he watches every Arsenal game, etc., etc. Once again, Zin Arsenal are ho hoping to conclude a deal with Man City to sign Zinchenko next week. It is understood the total transfer fee um, is in the region of 30 million. He spent six years at City before he's leaving. He's obviously crossed, crossed paths with Mikel Arteta. You look at some of these metrics, people, per 90 minutes um, of last season, passes completed for a fullback. He was first. Passes completed in the final third. He was first. Passing accuracy, he was first. Forward passes, he was fourth. Probably Trent and Robertson and a couple others better than him in that regard. Um, but maybe if he played more, he would have a better metrics. Assists, he's fifth. Not that I care about any of that, but bring the man to the carpet, in it, people? So he's a versatile player. It is what it is. And when you look at his head-to-heads against Xhaka, they're near enough identical. For aerial duels, one, you know, he scores just better. For tackles, one, he scores better. For interceptions, better. For forward passes, better. For chances created, better, you know. For possession one in the defensive third, better. For possession one in the middle third, Granite scores better. And that might be because Granite plays in the middle of the park more than him and also just plays more than him. I don't know, but they're very identical. So they'll probably be like for like. They could probably play together in Arteta's mind and we can't rule it out, but they're probably is, is either one or the two, as well as obviously his, his versatility. On the ball, Zinchenko's passing statistics are superior to Xhaka's, but as expected to be a given, given City keep the ball and use it better than Arsenal. And obviously, as I said, Xhaka is 29, contracted until 2024. His future is going to be volatile. He It could be a like-for-like -like replacement with Zinchenko in the middle of the park in that regards, people. So it is what it is. Gabriel Jesus creates chaos, perfect for what Arsenal needs, says Mikel Arteta. He creates chaos and uncertainty and he's always on the shoulder. He's always there to nick the ball off you. He's always in front of goal. He's a real threat and he's what we need. He is the one. Whenever we give the ball, he's straight away active. I love it. Putting pressure on and getting his team behind him. He has developed his leadership skills a lot. I can see straight away what he's trying to do with the boys and he's the type of guy we want. I love these kind of players. They're streetwise. They learn a lot. Arteta has never been more specific. I'm loving this. They know how to feel. They know how to feel they can take advantage of any situation. And that's the qualities we need. We had other qualities, Gabriel and Eddie and Ketia as well. They have different qualities. So it is what it is. On, on Saka's contract, he said, we will try. We both have the same intention. It's a match. General injuries in our team, he said, we have Tierney with a slight problem. We have Smith Rowe with a muscular niggle, Tommy Asu as well, and Ben White. So he's been vague on Tommy Asu and Ben White. As we get closer to obviously the season starting, you're a bit nervous with them. Smith Rowe, you want to see him get over that. And you're almost sighing over Kieran Tierney. We knew Fabio Vieira wasn't going to be do it playing a part. He spoke in the in the interview how he picked up an injury away with Portugal's under 21s and he's he's running again in that. But yeah, he was probably naive if he thought anything. Again, as I said before, this tell brother, if if buy and get him, then fair enough. And I don't see us buying another striker, but I think he has a great future in the game. The young French lad who shined at the under 19 Euros, man. He, he he's intelligent, he drops deep, he plays with his head up, he can score goals, he's got the right physique, a lot to improve. But if it really is taking 20 odd million, I'd I'd commit that. Rens have a good academy and they're developing lit players. Bayern's second offer for this man, Matthias Tell, was rejected. It was 18 million fixed plus four and a, four and a half in add-ons, people. The third bid is now expected to be more than 25 million. Bayern are convinced he would play over 20 games this season. If you can play for Bayern, you can play here, innit? Really. Don't care what a world he said. Um, allegedly, Southampton want 40 million for Carl Walker Peters, who he's linked with. With Zinchenko arriving, I can't see that. Um, what has Mikel Arteta said? I mean, we've seen this create, he creates chaos thing. Uh, he said training's been phenomenal. The development has been really good. Honestly, the way they've been training has been phenomenal. The best since I've been here, the togetherness around the group, the quality they've shown, the intensity in how they train. They are different standards. They feed off it. We had that around the training ground and around the hotel. So thank you so much. It's been a really good camp so far. We're leaving tomorrow for Orlando. So I think the boys will have a good, mem good memory about this trip. 
Martinelli said there's big improvement to happen. You know, he said it was a hard game. We knew they had a really good team. They are preparing the team as well for the Premier League. And we tried to do our best. And I think we deserve to win. One second, people. Sorry, folks, I meant to be going football. One sec. Gonna be late for that. I saw a text. See, I'm being late. He said, We are improving, but there's a big gap for improvement still to happen. But we'll try to get there and try to win all the games. Um, then on supporters, he said, Yes, it's very nice to see our fans here in America. I would like to say thank you to them for coming out here and supporting us. I think it was good for them as well because we got to win. On Orlando, he said, yes, I'm very excited to go there and do our best as we have done here and try to win all the games there as well. So that's Martinelli speaking. Arteta said on how useful it was. It was good to really difficult halves. Pieces were and the execution was really good. We were threat. We were a threat all the time. We had a lot of attacking ball. I really like that we conceded nothing. The second half, we started a bit sloppy. We changed the formation. We did go to a back three. I haven't seen any Jeremy Doku rumours, to be fair with you. But you lot keep saying that. He's very raw. I mean, bring him to the carpet, but he's very raw, if I'm honest with you. Match. We, lo we lost 20 minutes. We changed again, and I think we got control again. Overall, the boy... High intensity in every session, and you can see the way they play. On Gabriel Jesus, we spoke about this. Understanding with his teammates straight away, they are looking for him. He's generating chances, good connections around specific spaces. We want to exploit with him, especially. And yeah, we're really happy. He said, well, he's very volatile, but obviously the way we would like to develop him is in that position, but not on his own sometimes. So that might mean that might mean we can play two up. That might mean we can play two up top people, you know. Because but not on his own sometimes. But don't close that door because Gabby, in relation to what the opponent does in certain games, we're going to have to use him in different positions. He's open to that and he knows it's part of his strengths as well. That must be a you problem, man. You seem to be the only one saying that, my guy. If someone else is saying that, let me know so I can obviously look to help that. On the qualities him and Jesus, Jesus and, and, and K you have. They have everything that we need. First of all, they are really intense. Both of them, the way they can press, the way they can sustain pressure with the opponent is great. Both of them can thread it in behind, which allows people to have spaces inside. They're really good in link-up play and both have an eye for goal, which is what the nines do. But they're not just nines. They have all the qualities for the way we play. They are fantastic. And on whether we need a traditional nine, it depends. Look at Harry Kane, look at Haaland. I think at the moment there are certain strikers that are available. That's true and Kane is a throwback number nine, but Kane isn't just that. He, he's trying to play like a 10 half the time. Harlan makes good runs off the ball as well. I do think you need people to play traditional, but in the modern game, you need to be somewhat multifunctional. But we do need goal threats. Qualities. Another one with completely different quality scores 45 goals every season. So what is available and what the team needs? Um on what he wants in the team, you want to have everything. You want to have a six foot one that plays as a false nine. But what can I say? What I can say is I'm really happy with the strikers that we've got. He obviously has a lovely, nasty streak. He spoke on other qualities. He didn't, he, he bigged up Matt Turner for obviously settling in well. And he was very thankful for the crowd and, you know, the Americans, them out there in Baltimore. Once again, he said we will try and we both have the same intention. It's a matter of time in relation to Saka's new deal. He then bigged up Saliba. He was really good. I think he played a really good game. He looks really composed straight away from day one. He looked completely focused. He's evolved the way. Niggle in his quad and we had to protect him, but he trained with the squad yesterday. So hopefully he'll be all right. He then obviously we've cut, we've spoken about Fabio Vieira, Tommy Asu, Kieran Tini, et cetera, people. We need to sign Glamando, Kante, Telemans to pay. Uh, no, I don't think we need to pay. I don't think we need Gilmando. I mean, Kante's lit, but at 31, we're going to see his age. Bring Telemans, though. And then, if obviously, if we go over there, what have we got here? On the topic of Saliba, people, the Athletic have an article. I haven't read it yet. Arteta says Saliba is in his plans for the coming season. And this was obviously before the Everton game, clearly. First of all, I'm oh, sorry, I think he's... 
minutes last year and he played to a really good level. He was educated with a different coach in a different league. Now it's about which is a very different context. He needs to show that now. Scrolling all the way down, he said, we cannot guarantee first-team football to anybody in this team. You can ask that question to anybody. What we can guarantee is that the ones we really see and think are going to take us to the next level, they are going to play lots of minutes. So, yeah, man. And then I think it, Arteta said here, the communication and honesty we had between each other has always been clear. I never promised minutes. I was very clear from the beginning what to expect. We made the decision to wait a few months to see whether that situation could change. It didn't. And then we had to make a decision and we made the right call those six months when he went away and then the following year. So that's that. So Maximum's lit, but it costs way too much money for Arsenal. And I don't think we'd be getting much bang for our buck in terms of productivity. But where that's concerned, you know, I think that's the Arsenal-related rumours. Some of you are saying we've been linked with Jeremy Doku. So let's see if there's anything there. See him linked with Liverpool again. And he's been linked with them since they tried to get him at 15 from Anderlecht. But I haven't seen any Arsenal links in relation to that. So I can't really comment on that, man. I think Zinchenko and Bequeta. Zinchenko is pure defensive. I love Saliba's attitude, wants to win everything. Good to hear Arteta was pleased with Saliba's performance last night. Hope that gives him more confidence. Amen. Man United have confirmed the signing of um, Lissandro Martinez. So if you're a United fan, you've got Ian Eriksson and someone else. You look, we're getting on to your fans for not, I mean, your, your club for not bringing in players. Really. The only one you ain't got done is, is De Jong and it don't seem to be you lot's fault. Part of me, DG, get Lucas Paqueta and a right wing that can play across the front line. I get that Telemans is a good prem talent, but I'm saying this, DG, if you had to throw one a shirt for next season, who are you chucking it to? Telemans, Paqueta or Savage? Brazilian bias. I do like Milinkovic. I'd probably say Milinkovic. Savage, just because he's got the ability to score goals specifically from central midfield as well as everything else. P Lucas Paqueta is Brazilian and that, but I do think... Different player, but I think we've got similar profiles to Lucas Paqueta. Telemans is lit, but you've you've mentioned Zinchenko, man. Zinchenko is good, as I would prefer him on the midfield to Xhaka. Also, I feel we could have gone for Gilmando as an option. Nah, man. Gilmando is rubbed. I think Zinchenko and Telemans are good enough. We have got many versatile players who can play in different positions, and I think we're good to go. I think Sambi's development could have one of the biggest effects on the squad. Amen. Think the DM spot is the one position where we lack a quality prospect. Amen. DG, which things you learned from the game against Everton? I'll, I'll be off the top of my head. It's difficult. Please check out my video I did last night. It'll tell you everything. Respectfully. Man tried to say Ronaldo to Fingy, man. Hope you're doing better, my dudes. Shout out to you lot tuned in, people. 300 likes, people. First things first, thank you very much for doing such, people. If you've done that, big up yourselves. But what I will say, people, oh, Zinchenko and Telemann should be good enough. If we bring in Zinchenko to play in midfield, I'm done with this club. Why? Could do a lot worse. Lissandro for 60 million is too much. Did we dodge a bullet? I mean, if he shows he's a quality sign, then we ain't dodged a bullet. If he's rubbish, then obviously we're going to mention that. I feel like Arsenal are prioritising wingers when they don't need wingers. They just need strong defensive. We don't score goals, so I'm not sure on that. Belind is saying Leroy Sane wants to stay at Bayern. Sane is German. Doubt he wants to leave Bayern. Sane hasn't hit the levels expected of him at Bayern. Watch Mane take his spot. Crazy. I'd probably Milinkovic Savage. I mean, Juventus keep being linked with, with Gabriel. It's getting boring now from them. Saliba did quite good against, against, against Everton, as I keep mentioning. With that being said, though, we've hit 300 likes. We've had some fantastic conversation. As usual, I appreciate you lot supporting the thing, people. But, yeah, I'm off to go watch five-a-side football. I'm going to laugh at my brethren's people. So, with that, I hope you lot enjoy whatever's left of your afternoon, people. Um, and I'm back when I'm back. I'll be back tomorrow at 11.30, normal time for the weekdays. And we'll talk about whatever is in relation with Arsenal, innit, people? Smash the like button, hit the subscribe. Have a great Sunday. And I'll see you lot tomorrow, people. I'll cut up some clips from this live stream in general. Um, I've released some videos this morning as well. So there should be some DG content if you haven't got your fix. Appreciate you lot. Thank you for hitting the like button, boosting the engagements. Make sure you're liking, subscribing on Twitch and YouTube. Journey to 10,000 and 50,000 on both platforms alike. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Peace. <laughs>